the lady vanishes. You tell an engrossing story in the first episode. Oddly, it's about a 19th century British painting, and yet it has relevance to Hillary Clinton. At least I think so. Explain to me the background. Yeah, so the, it's an episode about a, uh, a painting called Roll Call, which in the late 19th century England is briefly the most famous painting in all of England, and it's painted by a woman. At a time when the, the artistic community in England is overwhelmingly male, and everyone thinks this is the door is going to finally open for women to enter the profession of, of painting. Um, and so she is thought of as this great sort of token, uh, sorry, this great pioneer. And that's not what happens. What happens is that the minute she achieves even a little bit of success, the door just slams shut. And she's essentially pushed out of the mainstream of English painting and subjected to some pretty harsh treatment by the kind of male establishment. And that idea <clears throat> is that notion of a token, about someone who uh, is an outsider who's let in only to have the door shut behind them, is what the show is about. There's a, there's a, in, in psychology, a, a psychologist named Dan Efron has, has, has come up with this phrase called moral licensing, which describes that, which is when a group, when a majority group does something generous or good or open, they feel they have the license then to go back and to do something nasty or to close the door that they once opened or to lash out at someone who they had once welcomed. And that's what happened to Elizabeth Thompson in the 19th century. And I feel like that has happened many times to outsiders who enter a closed world. And I sort of feel like that's what might happen to Hillary Clinton. That, you know, I, I, in, the, in the show, I talk about the Julia Gillard, who was the Prime Minister of Australia, first female Prime Minister of Australia. So a, a parallel to Hillary, what might happen with Hillary Clinton. The minute Gillard takes office, she gets subjected to a level of misogynistic abuse that was astonishing. And I interview her for the, for the podcast. And I, that's the same phenomenon, that having done something so generous as to let in the first woman ever, then the majority feels they have the freedom, the license, to lash out. And it's... You and know, as, you, as you document in the podcast, this notion of moral licensing is something that you saw with regard to the painter, you saw yeah. with regard to Jackie Robinson and baseball, you even saw it with regard to those who cast ballots for Barack Obama. Yeah, this is some of this psychologist Dan Efron's research he gets started with this when he starts to look at people who voted for Barack Obama. And he found that people who voted for Obama then were more likely to take um, illiberal positions, to take positions that might be considered uh, uh, racially insensitive. Or, and what he was saying is it's the same phenomenon, that when people can say to themselves, look, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person who voted a black man uh, into the into the presidency of the United States. Once they can say that about themselves, they feel they have the freedom then to go and indulge some of their baser instincts. Um, and that that phenomenon, ex I think, explains so much about the persistence of discrimination. And so, to those who say, "Well, the nation might shatter the final glass ceiling with the election of the first female president of the United States," Malcolm Gladwell now of revisionist history fame says, not so fast. This may get more challenging for Clinton. When you look at other countries, I mean, the, uh, at the end of the podcast, I just simply go around the world and look at how many countries have had one and only one female head of state. And it's an astonishingly long list. You know, same thing with, think about uh, how many major cities in the United States have had one and only one black mayor, right? That this is a common phenomenon that you open the door, you let one token in, and then you can, then you say, look, I can now shut it because I proved my bona fides. I voted for David Dinkins in New York City for mayor, and now I don't have to vote for a black man ever again. Or I, you know, I voted for uh, uh, Mayor, you know, Mayor Bradley in LA, and now I don't have to vote for a, a black man ever again. I mean, that is a uh, very real phenomenon in American politics. I don't I get see it. why the... I mean, the, the, ta the, the, the takeaway is you'll know when we've gotten past these prejudices when the nation has its second, second. African-American president or yeah. its second female president. Exactly. Hey, Malcolm, I wish you all good things. I thoroughly enjoyed the podcast. Thank you so much.